Good morning everyone and welcome to Heronbrook Farm Kitchen. It is fantastic to have you here as always and today we're going to be making cheese souffle. So let's talk about classic cheese souffle. This isn't your fancy restaurant small pot. This is a big dish souffle for a family lunch. We're not looking for this to be all flat on the top and perfect. We're looking for something lumpy and bumpy and oozing and hot and absolutely delicious. We like to make it in one big dish uh, because you just seem to get a much better souffle. Small dishes are fine for a sweet souffle, when we're making raspberry souffle for instance, we'll make those in individual portions. But for a hearty cheese souffle for lunch, it's gotta be the big dish every time. Okay, so let's talk about the ingredients. The two main ingredients are eggs, and you're gonna need seven eggs. We're gonna use seven egg whites and three egg yolks. So you'll have some yolks left over to put in a scrambled egg or something like that. Uh, and cheese. Uh, we're going to make it with cheddar today. Normally we'd use Gruyere or Comte, but we've run out. Somebody ate it all and we forgot to reorder. So we're going to make it with cheddar. Um, you're going to prepare the bowl just to make it extra delicious. And in order to do that, you're going to need some bread. This is a bit of leftover old pandemi and some Parmesan and then some salt and pepper. Uh, you're going to need to make a roux which is the, in fact, you're gonna make a cheesy roux, which will be the basis of the, uh, of the souffle. And in order to make that, you're gonna need 50 grams of butter. You're gonna need 500 milliliters or 500 grams of whole milk. You're gonna need 50 grams of plain white flour and a teaspoon of Dijon mustard. And then just to flavor the, uh, the roux, because that's where all the goodness in this souffle is gonna come from. Uh, what I like to do is to put a couple of bay leaves and some cloves, I've got three cloves in there, in the milk, and I warm the milk up beforehand, which you'll see. So let's jump in and start making the souffle. Okay, so we'll start by preparing the souffle dish. This is the dish, quite a big one, and I have lined this with butter. You do really wanna give it a good coating. You can melt the butter and paint it on with a pastry brush, I don't tend to bother, just get in with my fingers and wipe it around. But you do want a really good thick coating. Set that to one side. And then what I'm gonna do, I've got the stale bread here. Chuck that in the food processor. And I'm gonna go in, just using the microplane grater, and get some Parmesan grated in on top of that. Be better if I had a slightly larger grater, but this was the one that came to hand. Get that in there, then go in with some pepper. You don't need salt because the uh, parmesan itself is quite salty. Get the lid on and we'll wash that up. And you do want quite a fine breadcrumb, so I'm gonna leave this to run for 30 seconds. Okay, get the lid off. Get that off there. And then we literally just tip these straight into the bowl. and then swirl them round like you can see me doing here. I'm gonna go over to the bin in a minute and I'll literally empty this out into the bin. But what I'm looking for is to get the whole of the inside of the bowl coated with the breadcrumb mixture. The rest of it I'm just gonna discard. You could keep them and use them again, but they won't last very long. Uh, and then I'm gonna put this in the fridge and just leave it to chill until we're ready to use it. Okay, and the next thing I'm gonna do, and you can do this up to an hour before you're ready to make the souffle, is I'm just gonna prepare the milk, which I'm gonna to use to make the roux sauce, which is the base of the souffle. So I've got 500 ml of whole milk here in a saucepan. I've got a couple of bay leaves picked fresh from the garden, and I've got some cloves, they go in. And then just give it a little bit of a stir. And this is quite boring, this bit doesn't make for great video, so I'll turn the camera off in a moment. Just gonna bring this up to just below the boil. And once it's come up to just below the boil, I'm gonna set it to one side and leave it to cool down in the kitchen uncovered to allow all the flavors from the bay leaf and the clove to go into it. And then just before I want to make the roux, I'm gonna strain it into a jug and I'll make the roux with that milk. 
Okay, so the next stage for the souffle, what are we now, about an hour before we want to eat it? You could do this even 45 minutes before, but about an hour before we want to eat it, I'm gonna make the bechamel, uh, which I'm gonna flavor with the cheese, which is the base of the souffle. So I've got the butter, which I've just cubed up, got it in a saucepan, I'm gonna get that on a medium heat, and we're just gonna allow that to melt. So you can probably hear the butter is just starting to sizzle, if you can hear it over the fan of the induction cooker. So once that butter starts to sizzle, you can cook it for a little bit and allow it to go slightly brown. Um, and that gives you what's called a burn noisette, uh, which gives it a sort of depth of flavour. Just for the sake of speed today, I'm not going to bother. I'm going to go straight in with the plain flour, turn that down, and then I'm just going to carry on mixing might change influence in a moment, but just carry on mixing with my version of a wooden spoon. And what we're trying to do here is mix together all of the butter and the flour into a nice smooth paste. So I've turned it right down now to quite a low heat and you can probably see that just coming together beautifully starting to bip and bip. So we'll just let that cook in a bit and I'll go and get the milk. So here's the milk we prepared earlier, if you remember, with the cloves and the bay leaf. Uh, it's still warm, which is great. That makes it uh, go in much better and you get a much creamier, smoother sauce. Uh, all I did was just pass it through a sieve into the jug. So you just want to keep working this butter and flour mixture, the roux, as it's called until it starts to look slightly dry. It's a very hard thing to describe, but I can assure you, once you see it, you'll know exactly what we're talking about. And that's about there now, so I'm gonna to change to the whisk, and I'm gonna go in, just give it a little bit more heat. I'm gonna go in with some of the milk, and you wanna get a, a good bit in, I would say, to start with. I've probably gone in with about half of the milk. It's about 250, smells amazing. And what we're doing now is just with the whisk, going to constantly work it. That's thickened up already. So I go in now with some more milk just to loosen that up again. Looks lumpy, looks horrible. It will, always does. It will come back together beautifully if we keep working it. Good exercise. Okay, I'll just go in now with a final bit of milk. Beautiful and smooth now. Make sure you scrape down the sides. Don't want any lumps in it at all. Turn the heat back up a little bit. So you can probably see there now, that's starting to turn glossy, which is exactly what we want. And you must keep stirring it. If you stop stirring, very good chance it will catch on the bottom of the pan and then you'll burn it and that burnt flavour will go through not just the whole bechamel but also your souffle which is not what you want at all. Turn the heat down again. It's looking good now. It does just slightly change texture when it's done. Um, it's quite hard to describe and it's probably not going to be able to see it on the video but you can see I'm starting to make lines in it now and that is about perfect. The more of this you make the more you get a feel for what it is that you're looking for. And I'd say that's about done so I'm going to take off the heat uh, and I'm going to go in with the cheese. Just take the whisk out now. Uh, and what we've got here, we've got about 150, 160 grams of cheese, which I've grated. Just sprinkle that in. Maybe put it all in at once. Go back to the spoon and just stir that in. It will melt in eventually. Just keep going, keep working it. A bit more in. Oh, it smells absolutely amazing. So whilst that's melting in, what I'm gonna do is 
just go in with a teaspoon, generous teaspoon. In fact, I'm going to do an extra one of Dijon mustard. And I'm going to put in some salt. And I'm going to be quite generous with the salt because we're using cheddar, which is not a super salty cheese. And then I'm going to go in with a couple of turns of ground black pepper and we will just mix all of that together like so and at this stage I'm going to change implements one more time because I'm going to go with, you guessed it, the spoonchula and the reason I'm going to do that is that allows me just to scrape down the sides so you end up with something that looks a bit like this, quite nice and thick now, glossy. This would make an amazing and delicious cheese sauce. Sauce Mornay. Very important, before you finish, get a spoon and give it a taste. And that is perfect. So to my taste, it tastes quite salty and it tastes quite strong. But what you've got to remember is we're going to put um, seven egg whites whipped up into a meringue. So a huge volume into this. And so this does need to be quite intense in flavour because it's all going to be diffused through the delicious souffle. So that's done. We can set this to one side and wait until we're ready to combine it in the final thing to actually bake the souffle. Right, so we're ready for the final stage of making the souffle. The oven's preheating 220 degrees, and what I've done is I've put a steel baking tray in there, which I'm hoping is going to get really nice and hot, and that will hit the, when we put the souffle dish in, the, the base of the souffle dish will be on that and will give it a real boost. So here's the stand mixer bowl. I'm going to just dribble into that some lemon juice, and I'm then going to use the lemon juice as a cleaning agent because the key thing to make a really really great souffle is to have a very very light meringue with your egg white and any fat in the bowl of any description of any yolk or anything butter uh, is going to spoil that so we've now got a really nice clean bowl and I'm going to go in with just a few drops of lemon juice which really helps to get the egg white rising. And then, these are the whites of seven eggs, and I'm just gonna pour them straight in, clip it onto the machine, and we're gonna use the whisk attachment. Put that on, and start that whisking at quite a fast speed. Uh, this is the bowl from earlier with the bechamel sauce in. I've got my three egg yolks. Those are going to go straight in there. And then I'm going to use the whisk. And I'm going to whisk the yolks briskly in. And you end up with this amazing colour. Okay, so you can see that the egg white is starting to go fluffy. We're doing it on a, I would say a medium fast speed. We'll turn it up a little bit now. And we're looking for this to really balloon up in volume, which it has done already, but it will go further. So I'll keep mixing at a very, very high speed now. As fast as the machine will go. And we want to keep doing this until just before the egg white mixture starts to separate, which we're getting close to that now. Okay, that's just about perfect. What we've got is a nice, pop that down there. Just move the stand mixer out of the way. What we've got is a nice stiff piece. Um, which you can see it's completely holding its own shape, nice structure. So what I'm going to do is put about a third of the meringue mixture into the bowl 
and I'm not going to fold, I'm going to literally stir this in and what this does is it just loosens up the bechamel and gets it beautiful it's already quite light absolutely lovely that in there and now we can put the rest of it in just scoop it all in doesn't matter now What a messy process, but who cares, get rid of that. Right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to fold, which means picking up the heavier liquid from the base and just pushing that on top of the meringue. Because what we want to do is we want now want to keep as much air as we possibly can in this, all of these little micro bubbles that were created when we whisk up the egg white is what's going to give the meringue its rise and you want to keep doing this for a minute or two the more you mix it the better it will combine but the more air you'll knock out of it so you'll sort of know when it's done because you'll, it will become more homogeneous at the moment I can still see little lumps of unmixed egg white in there okay so this is the folding technique now just go around and just pull it over now what I don't actually try and get this too so that it's all one consistency I don't mind it having bits where it's a bit more cheesy and bits where it's a bit more egg whitey because we like just quite a rustic uh, souffle but if you're making a, a fruit souffle or you're trying to impress you just keep working this until it's all a single consistency. But I'm going to leave that there now and get the bowl. Okay, so here's the souffle dish we prepared earlier. That's just been set up in the fridge. You can see the breadcrumbs and parmesan, all that delicious stuff is, is sat there. So I'll put that down there and we will literally just pour this in. And if I've calculated correctly, this should just about fill this souffle dish. So there we go. Now you can flatten the top off. You can overfill it deliberately and then use a palette knife to give yourself a really flat top. You would normally do that if you were making individual small souffle. Um, this is supposed to be a lovely rustic family thing. So we don't want to hang around now. The oven is preheated. I'm going to get this straight in. So into the oven, no steam obviously. Turn it down to 200 degrees and we're going to leave it in there for probably about 25 minutes. But from 20 minutes onwards I'm going to be watching it. It's very easy for it to burn on top if you're not careful. So I'll get back to you when it's baked. Okay, time has gone off. It's looking absolutely amazing. Let's get it out. Turn the oven off. Look at that. Absolutely fabulous. So normally at this stage I would spend ages talking about it and showing it to you, but it's a souffle so we've got to get it in and get it eaten. Um, so I'll come back once I've eaten it and I'll tell you all about it. Well, that souffle was absolutely delicious. Really enjoyed it for our lunch with a little bit of bread. Uh, it really does make a cracking lunch. If you've got plenty of eggs, why not give it a go? It's ever so easy to make at home if you follow the recipe that I've given you and the techniques that I showed you today. I hope you enjoyed it. I certainly enjoyed eating it. Have a great rest of your day and we'll see you on the next one.